Okay, here we go. I'm going to start that again because the YouTube VOD. Hello, everyone. This is Programmer Mitch uh, coming at you with a leak code number 238, Product of Array Except Self. Uh, it's a leak code medium. About half of the accept, uh, submissions were accepted. It's got a lot of likes because it's an interesting problem. Let's hop into it. Given an array of n integers where n is greater than 1, nums, return an array output such that output of i is equal to the product of all the elements of nums except nums of i. Uh, solve it without division and in O of n time complexity. For example, given 1, 2, 3, 4, re uh, return this uh, with 24 because that's 2 times 3 times 4. 2 times 3 is 6 times 4 is 24. 12, which is 1 times 3 times 4. Uh, 8, which is 1 times 2 times 4, and 6. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Hi, Pulsating. And Lavender JMK, thanks for stopping in. Could you solve it with constant space complexity that we're going to? And the output array does not count as extra space for the purpose of the space complexity analysis. Um, the, perp the reason I'm doing this is actually I was talking to my friend and I'm talking to some others, and I've seen some solutions to this that are, that are relatively complicated, but it, they don't really necessarily have to be. Um, there's, a, there's a pretty easy approach that you can do with not a whole lot of conditionals. And actually, I think no conditionals. Um, so this is kind of one of those gotcha problems, kind of like finding a cycle in a linked list. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and spill the bean, beans. Hey, Korea, thanks for stopping in. Uh, so a way to, uh, to think about this problem and a hint that I would give if someone is struggling after 10 or 15 minutes in a software engineering setting um, would be the number two is the product of all the numbers that come or what we want to put into it is the product of all the numbers that come before it and then that also come after it. So that should get your wheels turning a little bit. And with that we can think about time complexity and this should really get your wheels spinning. Basically if you have a nested for loop that walks over an array of length n, well then if you have those two for loops like this, um, for num in nums, and then you do for num in nums again, or something like that, um, you never write it like this, right? Because that's just telling you the same information. But you could um, just 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 think about this. Uh, this would be a time complexity of n squared, right? Because we're looping through. But if we think about it like this, if we do for num and num and then if we do four num and nums afterwards, um, that's still linear time complexity. Uh, so that would still satisfy this O of n. So that should be a big hint. We're going to have two for loops sitting on top of each other. Um, yeah, and so basically that's it. The approach for this type of problem, for, for this problem, is that we're going to walk through. We're going to have a product that keeps track of every element um, multiply it together as we walk through um, and that way um, as we walk through it forward uh, and we're going to take that product and multiply that by a resultant array um, and then we're going to do the same thing backwards um, so basically to understand this with this number one we're going to multiply uh, a number one that's a resultant array that's not that's not using this input uh, with everything that comes before it. There's nothing that comes before it, so we don't multiply it by anything. But then we also come back and we multiply it so that everything comes afterwards. Um, this 2, we multiply with everything that comes before it, which is a 1, and also everything that comes afterwards, which is 3 times 4. But we're going to be approaching it from the opposite side, which is 4 times 3. That's a little confusing, so let's let's put pen to paper. Code, don't lie. Uh, so let, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to have this output. Uh, which is going to be in Python um, start out as just a, a list of ones or an array of ones. That's the length of our input. And we're just going to instantiate a product, which is like a trailing product um, that will uh, tell us everything that's multiplied before that number. So instead of for num and nums, we're going to say for i in range of length of nums because we want to keep track of that uh, index. Um, and so our output array at any given point, we're going to multiply it, uh, 
bought and then and, and and multiply it by that product and set that to that to that uh, to that element. And this is uh, somewhat confusing, but now that I think about it even more, uh, so I am going to um, do some examples at the end just to show how this works. Then this product actually itself becomes um, what we're looking at in the in the nums. We multiply um, the element in nums, so it trails through. Um, Let's go ahead and return output. This will be an incorrect answer, so we're just going to do run code, which will just run through some things. But we want to um, print, and we want to show uh, the product and the output as we walk through as we walk through this forward. So, oops, do a custom. So zero zero is not particularly interesting. It's probably easier to think about this one two three four. Let's try that again. I want to take a drink. So we expect 24, 12, 8, 6. We're only going one way forward, so we're not going to get that. Uh, but we're going to get 1, 1, 2, 6. So our output, our resultant list is 1, 1, 1. Um, and eventually becomes 1, 1, 2, 6. But we, we, we evaluate the 6 um, be, uh, beforehand. So 1, 1, 2, 6. So it, it's like sucking up everything as we walk in. So it, gets, it becomes 2, and then 6, and then eventually... Um, yeah, one, one, two, six. Let's go ahead and delete that print statement. And now you just go through the, uh, the, the backwards ways. So you reset your product to one. Uh, and then we walk through the array uh, from the other way. And this is how you do that in Python, or at least one way. And then the... The body of the for loop is exactly the same. The output uh, is multiplied by prod and set and set to that, and then the prod uh, becomes set to uh, what we just looked at in the nums. Uh, yeah, and that's basically it. Let's go ahead and submit that solution. Hey, Polymath, thanks for stopping in today. And yeah, then we kind of um, yeah. Well, kind of. Then we have the fully accepted answer. So let's go ahead into the more details and see this. Uh, 55 percentile of, of Python submissions. I've seen it as high as like this solution, like as high as 75, 80, or even as low as 10 percentile. It's linear time complexity, so you can't beat the time complexity. Um, you could. There, there are methods to wrap this up in one for loop, but I think that's relatively confusing. Um, I think this this one is pretty straightforward and, and one to kind of remember. Um, so it, the the long, and I'm kind of repeating myself here, like a broken record, but the long and the short of it is that if we want to have the product of everything except for itself, all the, of those elements, if we multiply everything that comes before it on the way up and everything that comes after it uh, on the way back and, and insert in that, into that element into the list, um, then we have a good solution. Uh, and this does not have any crazy conditionals, anything like that. And it's just, it's just a really nice, uh, clean way to solve this problem that I think is relatively popular um, out there. Um, yeah. It's a little bit shorter of, of, one, of one today. Sometimes the, the more concise uh, solutions are not that long. But let's just take one more time to go back here um, to walk through this code before I, before I call it a day. Um, we set an output uh, to be a list of ones. That's the length of our input. We set initial product. Then we walk through the uh, input nums and the output. Yep. Yeah, Polymath, it's... Um... Oh, what type of contest is that? Oh, if you're doing uh, some type of programming Olympiad? I think this one would probably be a little bit too easy for an Olympiad, but definitely an interesting one, one, to, one to start with. Um, so we walk through it forward. We have an output that is multiplied by a product um, that kind of sucks up those numbers that come before things. And then we do the same thing backwards. We have an output, and we go through it uh, backwards, and we, and we multiply through the product on, on the way back. Then we go ahead and return that output. Um, this output array does not count as extra space for the purposes of the space complexity analysis. Uh, really, though, this would be... 
um, space complexity of linear complexity, right? We're returning an additional array um, that is also the length of our input. Oh, cool. Well, thanks, uh, Polymath. You're not started yet, but you're just getting qualified by doing a lot of problems. I'm doing a lot of problems. I'm here every 5.30 uh, p.m. on Sunday's EST. Um, probably going to be wrapping this one up, but I'll, I'll, be, I'll be online to chat in, in a little bit. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, I'm going to be doing leak code number 76, uh, which is, uh, I think, a very common problem in those type of um, Olympiads. Uh, 76, it's called minimum, a minimum window substring. And this is going to be my solution. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. This is a uh, leak code hard. I think you probably might see this one in, uh, in, in some type of, uh, Olympiad. Um, it's a very liberal like problem. It's very. It's a pretty difficult problem. But once you get um, the sliding window approach, which you may or may not have uh, seen before, uh, which is a little new to me, and so it'll be an exciting thing to learn for this for this thing uh, next week at 5:30 p.m. is when I plan to do this uh, minimum window substring problem. Uh, but with all that said, this was a programmer Mitch. I just did leak code number 238, product of array except self. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next week at 5:30 p.m. EST.